sixth consecutive game. Allen Fieldhouse is sold out, and is this the year that Kansas' a streak of 13 consecutive Big 12 titles comes to an end? Plenty of competition at the top of the league as we welcome you to Super Tuesday, presented by Boost Mobile. It's always rocking at the fog as Kansas is looking for some revenge. They had a 51-game home winning streak snap last year when they lost at home to Iowa State. Hi uh, again, everyone. Bob Susan here with Brant Fischella. Welcome to Super Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. This is a very interesting year in this league. You called this all last year, you said. Some of these younger teams were going to mature. Kansas would have some real competition this season. Well, and they have and they will. Think about it. Three home losses for KU as rare as a uh, solar eclipse. So that doesn't happen often, but for Iowa State, think about this. A new era has begun. Seven newcomers, and they are led by a very precocious freshman in Lindell Wigginton from a unique part of North America. Doesn't, don't produce very many Division I players, but the resume, Virginia High School Player of the Year, played at famed Oak Hill Academy with some other outstanding young players, and he has to be one of the linchpins for a completely new team for Coach Steve Brown. Kansas might be a heavy favorite tonight, but this crowd wants some revenge because it was the longest home win streak in America last year that was broken by Iowa State. And Steve McCaddle gets the Jayhawks off to the good start. Well, what a shooter he's been in this building. Nearly 60% on the season in Allen Fieldhouse. Bill Self said today, maybe their most consistent player. And Jackson is able to answer. He, of course, had the game-winning three last year when Iowa State pulled off that upset. Mikhailu tries another. He's got him. That's crazy. When you look at what he's doing in this building. Talk about feeling comfortable. Wow. Zabuki with the block. Mikhailu looking for three in a row. It's almost that solar eclipse you were talking yeah. about when he misses. Weiler bad at the other end. That's in and out. And Azabuki pulls down the rebound. But Gerald Vick left alone. The back tap to Graham. Oh, nice job by Marcus Garrett. McCallum's got nine. Kansas has nine. It's a six point early lead. There's the freshman spinning to the goal, rejected by Yudoka Azabuki. Last year, Steve Prohm brought a very experienced group in here. They could take the punch and the atmosphere as Jackson is able to hit another three. How about a younger group, a less experienced group, dealing with Allen Fieldhouse? you got to survive the first five minutes. There's no question about it. And you have to have the mindset to be able to be tough enough to understand that you got to withstand not only the team on the court, but the 16,300 that are here to root this team on. Last Tuesday night, Texas Tech came in with that mindset. And it was the first game that Bill Self has ever coached in this building that Kansas never enjoyed the lead. Well, Bill Self told us earlier today that some of these guys still seem to be finding themselves with a new group of teammates. Obviously, you've got Devontae Graham, LeGerald Vick, Makai Luke. This is a group that played together a lot last year, but Malik Newman, brand new, obviously the transfer that is eligible this year. And Azabuki only played 11 games last year. 
before tearing the ligaments in his wrist. Yeah, and while we while we said last year that Kansas played small, remember their power forward was six foot eight and a future lottery pick. This year they are playing strictly four guards around Azabuki and then for limited time, Mitch Lightfoot. So this is a very perimeter oriented team. They've lived and died with the three so far. Newman. That comes up short with Gerald Vick. That is the first two point basket of the game. Joe Self was not happy with what Gerald Vick's last two games, only averaging five points per. Jackson steps back. Mikhailu's got the rebound. Malik Newman drives it. That's blocked. Cameron Lard able to get the rejection. Wigginton, nice shot fake. And an extra. Wigginton with a chance for a three-point play. Moses' first shot. He drove in, tried to take it into the big guy, got it blocked. This time he took it at the big guy, pump faked. Got him in the air and watched the finish. This is called being educated right here. Went to school on that last block. This young man knows how to put the ball in the basket. Azabuki picks up his first foul and that puts him on the bench. Mitch Lightfoot has come on for the first time. Lightfoot had six blocked shots in Saturday's road win for KU against TCU. Last Kansas player to do that. Joel Embiid. Not a lot of people would think you'd mention Lightfoot and Embiid in the same conversation. Yeah, I think Mitch will take his paycheck someday if it comes his way. Yep. A three goes down from the corner for Malik Newman. Oh, Malik's only one for three, but very aggressive so far. Bill Self is looking for the Malik Newman that was a high school All American. And welcome to Allen Fieldhouse. It is Super Tuesday presented by Boost Mobile. Bob Bushusen here with Fran Priscilla. Steve Mikhailu. Okay. Welcome to Allen Fieldhouse. Bob Bushusen alongside Fran Priscilla. We are just underway. Kansas and Iowa State. Things get interesting on a day by day basis in the Big 12. As Kansas is trying with Malik Newman's three on the way. And Wigginton lost it out of bounds, but it's knocked out by LeGerald Vick. Kansas trying to continue to make history year after year, win yet another Big 12 regular season championship. But it seems like there is a momentum changing win and or loss by some of the top teams in America, Fran, on a daily basis in this oh, league. Well, exactly. And you cannot look too far down the road. We're on, it is January 9th. There are going to be so many topsy-turvy wins and losses in this league. It's going to be an exhilarating two months. Shot clock at five. Jackson for three. That's short. And Solomon Young can't run it down in the corner. Well, so far, Bob, ten shots for Kansas, eight behind the arc. Whitefoot, not really a guy they throw the ball into, so... You can bet you're going to see more of that spread offense. Thing I like recently is Devontae Graham starting to drive the ball and get himself to the foul line. Makai Luke with a shot fake. He's got another triple. His fourth already. Crazy. He's flirting with 60% behind the arc in this building. 61 shots this year behind the arc. Comes Malik Newman. Graham's the trailer. Lightfoot with some hustle kept it alive. That's Cameron Lard. I'm not sure he knew where the basketball was. Wigginton from the corner. That's good. And a nice delivery by Wyler Babb, averaging 12 
points, seven rebounds, seven assists. He's the only player in college basketball that's done that thus far. I'll tell you what I like. We talked to Malik Newman today, and the coaches have talked to him about getting back to the guy that was a high school All-American. And he hasn't made every shot, Bob, but he's been ultra-aggressive so far. And I think that's by design. Bill Self wants him to try to regain some of that talent that we saw in the high school days. Wild bank shot for Donovan Jackson goes down. Graham left alone. Dodge bullet for Iowa State. John Shambi, thanks very much as we welcome you to Allen Fieldhouse and Super Tuesday presented by Boost Mobile. Bob Oshusen here with Fran Fraschilla. It is a early Kansas lead, almost Fran entirely due to the number two three-point shooter in the Big 12 so far this year, Svi Mikhailu. Well, and a guy that's number one in the Big 12 in this building because he's making nearly 60% of his threes. He's made 35 this year at about a 57% clip. And remember, this Kansas team, the best three-point shooting team in college basketball, they'll make on average about 11 a game. Last three teams Bill Self's had have been relying on the three ball. But Gerald Vick, that draws iron just barely. Here comes Nick Weiler back. Donovan Jackson back out to Weiler Babb. Three seconds, though, called on Cameron Lard. So with a battle of top ten teams in Norman, Oklahoma, won by Oklahoma, they deliver the first loss in conference play for Texas Tech. West Virginia, as you just saw, stays undefeated. And there's KU trying to just keep pace with OU and Texas Tech. In second place, is this the year? That finally, the 13 consecutive Big 12 championship streak for KU is broken. I'm it not, is early on. I'm not betting against Kansas. Because Lightfoot. I said before the season, I think they would win it again, but I think there could be a two or three way tie. Best, by the way, West Virginia is 4 0, right? You know where they go Saturday? They go to Texas Tech, and then they host Kansas next Monday night. And as a coach in this league, you have to have blinders on. You must be thinking about one thing and one thing only. Who's your next opponent? Malik Newman, a Euro yep. step crossover. Yep. We saw that on Tuesday against Texas Tech. He started to drive the ball. And for a guy who's known as a shooter, when they're not going down behind the arc, take it to the basket sub. This Kansas team with these four guards starting to drive it more. You see Malik Newman right there taking the freshman to school. Now Malik Newman for that little tap of the basketball out of bounds after he scored drew a delay of game warning. Kansas with the six point lead against an Iowa State team that lost 73% of their scoring, 78% of their assists, but trying to add some of that production back with a very talented freshman, Lindell Wigginson. He's had some prolific games already this year, Bob. Struggled a little bit in the last couple of conference games, but like most freshmen, just trying to figure it out. Newman too strong. Nick Weiler bad finds the ran tally. Shoveled one underneath. That was stolen by Devontae Graham. Now tally the grad transfer from Old Dominion. Whitefoot couldn't keep the Graham miss alive. Jackson for three. But Gerald Vick leans in. Offensive foul. Nick Weiler bad stood his ground and took the charge. One of the Big 12's most talented newcomers. We're going to get to know him better. A closer look at Lindell Wigginson when we return. Basketball is presented by Boost Mobile. And in part by AstraZeneca. Presented by Boost Mobile, 
Bob Oshusen, Fran Fraschilla. Well, Canada, over the last decade or so, has produced some terrific basketball talent. But normally, that talent seems to come from the greater Toronto area. Not so for Lindell Wigginton, Fran, as he comes from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, all the way to Ames, Iowa. It's only about 100 miles further to go to Iceland than it is to go to Ames from where Lindell Wigginton grew up. But you know what? I'd make that trip. It's three American Airlines segments, you know? Man, that's, yeah, they're speaking your language. And, and that's what Steve Prohm said. In order to get to uh, Halifax, where you fly into, it's Des Moines, Chicago, Chicago, Philly, and then up to Nova Scotia. But remember this, Iowa State over the last decade has had a Canadian player on its roster every year. So the comfort level that Lindell Wigginton has had as a freshman, he's fit in really nicely. The Princeton transfer, Hans Brace, gets on the board. I thought it was nice earlier today at shoot-around when you took Wigginton under your wing, so to speak, bad pun, taught him about those American connections. We call you Captain Upgrade for a reason. Yeah. I mean, he's going to want to know how to, <laughs> to pile up those segments, and you're the guy to teach him that lesson. Well, what I like about the young man is, and a lot of Canadian kids do this, in order to find the best competition, he came to, he came south and he spent three years at Oak Hill Academy as we see some of the top Canadian freshmen in college basketball this year. But you think about Lindell Wigginton. Oak Hill Academy is a school that produced Kevin Durant and uh, Rondo and Jerry Stackhouse and Corey Alexander and a whole bunch of others. And it's in Malta Wilson, Virginia. Which is where? It's on the North Carolina border in the far western southern corner of Virginia and uh, he has really blossomed not only as a player but he said getting away from home really helped him grow up over three years and he was the leading scorer on that Oak Hill team that every yeah. year they compete for whatever the high school national championship right. is as Marcus Garrett another freshman that one from Dallas able to get on the board Wigginton drives it, shields Azabuki. He knows how to scores. score, doesn't he? He knows how to score. He was part of that Canadian under-19 FIBA World Championship team this summer. The first Canadian team to ever win a world title. They knocked off John Calipari's uh, USA team in the semifinals. But watch him use his body right now. He's going to take it right into Azabuki. And that what that does is it eliminates, it eliminates Azabuki's ability to jump and just take a look at some of those guys see Lindell wearing number five I see Matt Coleman in the picture Billy Preston Tyshawn Alexander's off to a great start up in Creighton for Greg McDermott Steve Smith through the years has produced so many great college players about 25 NBA players maybe more Mikhailu comes up short kept alive his own miss and talking to Bill Self earlier today He's growing more and more frustrated by the day that he still doesn't have an answer from the NCAA on Billy Preston. His talented freshman, who he is expecting or was expecting by now, would be told whether or not he would be eligible or not. Yes. And Billy Preston will give him size inside to go with Azabuki. Mikhailu. That's short. Billy Preston hasn't played for Kansas yet as they were concerned obviously about a financial picture surrounding a car that he was driving and they just want to make sure before they put him in a game certainly that he is officially eligible and Bill Self says the NCAA has had all of the information that they should have needed to make a decision since December 23rd. They're still waiting for that call. Well, and, and I think he's more confident. Look at look at Wigginton. Oh my goodness. This is this is par for the course right here because of his strength and quickness. But I think he's more confident that Silvio uh, De Sosa will be eligible. Yep. The young man that left IMG Academy, a prep school oh, down in Florida, hey. young man from Angola, who graduated in December and rather than finishing his senior year he's now on the bench waiting for his eligibility to be cleared up you see Silvio right there in the middle with his hand on his chin and I've been around him he is an outstanding prospect great athlete and they need that size 
good start, three-point lead here at the Fog for KU. Be a terrific doubleheader starting at 7 Eastern on Big Monday next week as Bill Self will take the Jayhawks into Morgantown to take on Bob Huggins Mountaineers as not a friendly place and West Virginia up to number two in America and they will maintain that ranking and then some as they got a hard fought win over Baylor which I think Fran just continues to illustrate there are no off nights in this league this year. Yeah exactly and Baylor remember has not been whole until the last two games. West Virginia will play in Lubbock on Saturday afternoon. They expect to be back in Morgantown by 10 or 11 in the evening. So a quick turnaround for Kansas who plays Saturday morning here and then obviously West Virginia playing at home. Sam Cunliffe, the Arizona State transfer on for the first time. Strength from Wigginton to fight his way through contact, draw the foul, and almost knock down the jumper. As quickly, Cunliffe picks up a foul. And once you're concerned about a guy who's scoring, you, you do, sometimes you over hustle, and that's what Sam Cunliffe did. Young man who is from Rainier Beach High School in Seattle, one of the really great high school programs in the country. Jamal Crawford, Nate Robinson, Doug Christie. Sam was the player of the year. That was a quick cameo. Player of the year in the state of Washington a couple years ago. Had to be awkward for him. He transferred after 10 games at Arizona State. He was not eligible when Arizona State came in here and put a thumping on the Jayhawks. Based on the group of players that you also listed as alma maters at Rainier Beach, does that mean that Sam Cunliffe is also going to have to be at some point during his career on a really bad Knicks team? <laughs> he would only hope so. Yeah. Because all those other guys have that in common. <laughs> Makai Luke on the drive. High off the window. Donovan Jackson trying to create some space in McCollum State Hall. Donovan Jackson only 11 assists this year. He's more comfortable doing that. Way up in the air for the rebound off the Jackson miss was Malik Newman. And then LeGerald Vick held. Terrence Lewis picks up the foul. That's his first fourth for Iowa State. Or foul number three, pardon me. So I haven't had too many whistles through the first 13 plus minutes. No, and I'll tell you this for such a young team, Iowa State's come in here and been poised and composed. I think it's time to get the uh, big Doak involved. He's going to try to post up. Instead, it's Makai Luke for three. Wow. He's got five made threes here in the first half. Never a bad option. Not this year. This is the most confident we've ever seen him play. Wigginton, wild shot. And a foul called on Lard. Well, our women's Thursday night showcase features two of the top teams in America. Muffet McGraw is going to take her second-ranked Irish in to take on Louisville. Off to an 18 and 0 start, the third ranked Cardinals, 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app, the Thursday night showcase. Last spring, Muffet McGraw was chosen to the Basketball Hall of Fame. The ceremony was in September, and she entered the Naismith Hall of Fame with uh, a gentleman by the name of Bill Self, the fifth Kansas coach to be selected to the Naismith Hall of Fame. Five of eight, Bob. How's that for, for good odds? Eight coaches in Kansas history, five in the Hall of Fame. Weiler Babb to Lark. 
And he knocks down the elbow jumper. You see how easy that was? Wilder Babb hasn't scored yet, but just his ability to control the pace of the game. He's been a big reason why Iowa State's had maybe more success than we expected earlier. Fran drills a triple. That's his first basket. Iowa State lost their first two games of the season with Donovan Jackson at the point. Steve Prohm said, I wanted to give my senior a chance to run the show, but everything was just discombobulated. Wilder Babb went to the point. It allowed Jackson and Wigginton to concentrate on scoring. Blocking foul calls on Mikhailu. And they went and won the Puerto Rico shootout. And Nick Wilder Babb, the only player in the country, you see the numbers. And it's funny, Steve Prohm was telling us today, Bob, that during the summer he thought about moving Wilder Babb to the point. He wanted to make sure Donovan Jackson had the first opportunity. Monte Morris was back on campus, and he said to Steve Prohm during the summer, have you ever thought about playing Nick at point? He said, you know, I've thought about it. It's a pretty good recommendation. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> Arguably the best point guard in Iowa State history. The scoop is there for Wilder Babb. And if he maintains his assist average, he would shatter Monte Morris' single season record, averaging right now 7.6 assists per game, number six in America. And he would be number two. And you know who number three on that list would be? Jeff Hornacek, New York Knicks coach. That Knicks theme won't go away. It just won't go away. Here comes Wilder Babb the other way. Nice Bullets a pass to Lard. Nice. And off balance, Lard is able to finish. Well, he makes the game easier for his teammates. Remember, this Iowa State team has had two heartbreaking overtime losses. And watch the vision right there. And you see how that ball was like on a rope. Watch how quick that comes off. And give Cameron Lard credit for running the floor hard for a young big guy. That was fun to watch. He effortlessly snapped that ball yep. from midcourt right to the rim. That's why when you think of the golden age that graduated, the Niangs and the Matt Thomases and the Nazmi True Longs, Monte Morris, this is a whole new era of Iowa State. Lard Wigginton, our freshman. They've got a terrific recruiting class coming in. A couple really good transfers. Graham's fouled on the floor. Crowd looking for a continuation. But Solomon Young picks up his second. Isn't it interesting, Bob, when you make one position change, you make three guys better. Wilder Babs comfortable being a distributor. We know Wigginton and Jackson like the score. And it works out perfectly. Well, this is a team that's 0-3 so far in the league, but they lost to Kansas State. They said that was just a night where they were completely off. Their other losses, home to Texas, at Oklahoma State, both in overtime. So they've been right there if they could have finished. They would not be 0-3, and here they are, down by as many as eight in the first half at Allen Fieldhouse. They've got it tied. And most importantly, they're playing points. Newman's gonna have to force one up. Instead, he kicks it to the wing, and barely beating the shot clock was Cunliffe. Listen, when you have good guard play, you can go anywhere and have a chance to win, and it's, these guards have played very, very well tonight for Steve Prohm. Steve Prohm has had great guards during his career, including two point guards at Murray State that are in the NBA. Shot clock winding down, Wilder Babb with the Cyclones looking for their first lead. Shot clock at five. Jackson off to Wilder Babb. He tries a three. Kept alive by Lar. Is able to get it to Brace and Cunliffe is able to block the shot. Newman lost a shoe, so it's a five on four at the other end. And then it's tossed into the backcourt. Wilder Babb oh runs it goodness. down. Wilder Babb flips it to nowhere. Newman's still playing with only one shoe. Cunliffe the other way. He'll lean in. That's an offensive foul on Cunliffe. The crowd's unhappy. We've got a wild scrum at both ends of the floor. And Malik Newman's got a flat tire. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66. Proud sponsor of Big 12 Basketball. If Malik Newman's new nickname for KU isn't Cinderella, someone's missing a chance here because he's missing a shoe. 
He was caught in no man's land. He, he had a dilemma. <laughs> do, I, do I put the shoe on or do I try to play defense? He thought it was going to be an over and back. So he stopped playing. And then ultimately, Iowa State didn't score. And he was able to get his shoe back. Had to go find the glass slipper. Now, Cyclones have been really well put together tonight. Wiggins in with a great little pocket wow. pass, but traveling called on Cameron Lark. Well, coming up on the Land Rover halftime report, we will have another tremendous performance from an Oklahoma point guard who's going to become a household name. You were talking about Trey Young all last season, and we're seeing why. And as a bookie throws one down, Kentucky and West Virginia with big wins as well. Yeah, and, and let me just tell you, this was really important, this basket, because Kansas's first 30 attempts tonight, 23 behind the arc. And the one thing Bill Self's done really well this year is set up offense for Azabuki. That time out of the timeout, they said, hey, enough of the three-point shooting. Let's get the ball inside the dope. And to polish it off with the cherry on top, the 44% foul shooter makes the end one. And I would, get, I would expect more opportunities for Dope to get the ball inside. Brace. Put back is good for Lar. Well, I like this kid. Remember, he joined the team last year as an academic redshirt, so he practiced all year, but still only a freshman. And it looks like Brace will be called for the foul on Azabuki in the lane. That that's actually, the second on Brace. Yeah, I'm sorry, Bob. That's actually not a bad play because now Azabuki's got to go to the line again, and the odds are he's not going to make both of these, and if he does, it would be a bonus. Hans Brace, the young man, the graduate transfer from Princeton University, only played five games in his last two years for the Tigers, and he had a fifth year of eligibility. So that turns out to be an invisible turnover right there for Kansas. Azabuki, the second time he has swatted a drive from Lindell Wigginton out of bounds. Now this time, Wigginton tried to get body on him and watch Azabuki. He just wards him off right here. And let me tell you about this guy. He fouled out on Saturday night at TCU. It was only the second time this season that he had drawn even as many as four fouls. Remember last year he was committing nine fouls every 40 minutes. Graham stole it and then gave it away at the other end. That big Doak has gotten in great shape. He did not play in a Big 12 game last year because of the, the wrist injury. And uh, and I think you're going to see Bill Self play more towards the big fella offensively in the second half. But he's learned how to control his fouls. And he's certainly uh, become a major weapon for this Kansas team. He's number two in America at 76% from the field. That's because just about every basket is either a dunk yep. or right at the rim. He knows his role, and he plays it well. The shot clock is winding down to five. Weiler Bad picked up his dribble. Here's Wigginton. That's a long rebound. Weiler Bad uh, couldn't wall his man off. Yeah, Weiler Bad needed to get on the floor that one. That's a that's, a that's, that's how you shoot 76%. Yep. And you know what he did? He ran the floor. Why did he run the floor? Because he's in great shape. Wigginton tees up a three. The back tap. Lard gets it to Weiler back. Wigginton along two. That's good. 16 in the first half for the freshman, Lindell Wigginton. Just over a minute to go in the first half, and we're back in 30 seconds. The boogie, the sophomore, who's 260 pounds running the floor and making it look easy. Four double-doubles this year. He's playing 25 minutes a game. The stamina has improved. And the numbers speak for themselves. The field goal percentage really high. Well, he moved from Nigeria to the U.S. when he was a freshman in high school and basically began playing organized basketball then. So three years later, he's a McDonald's All-American. Still raw, still a project, and still a player that can learn so much and develop his game under Bill Self. Yeah, absolutely, because this last couple years has been somewhat of an aberration for Kansas. They're used to playing bully ball with guys like the Morris Twins and Thomas Robinson and Darrell Arthur. 
they'll go back to playing that way next year. That's a bookie. Is able to hang from the rim. Another assist for Devontae Graham. Bob, they were too reliant on the three-point shot the first 16 minutes. And they need to play through Azabuki inside. And you can either throw it to him from the perimeter, or you can drive it in dish it. That's what they're doing. Wiggins in with five to shoot. Uses the screen. Again, tries a tough pocket pass. Two on the shot clock for Iowa State, as it will stay with the Cyclones. This is this is uh, coaching right here. Do you have we call this a low clock play. Do you have a low clock play right here and a tough spot to throw it in from. That won't Lawrence work. gonna have to throw it up. That won't work. He doesn't even know it. He doesn't even know it. Shot clock violation. Yeah. See when you run that play and you throw it deep that's usually the safety valve. That's the last part of the play when you have a full shot clock. But when it's a low clock play, you've got to get one of those guards catch the ball. And KU will use that timeout. Can't take with you to the second half with eight and a half seconds to go. Here in the first half, Yudoka Azabuki has become in the latter parts of this first half big factor offensively and defensively as well. Exactly, Bob. Remember, 23 of the first 30 Kansas shots tonight were three-point shots. Now all of a sudden, whether it's his hustle or by design, the ball's getting inside the hands more easily, and you're seeing the effects of that. Now, obviously, it speaks for itself. Seven last, last seven Kansas points. And as much as they've been relying on the three-point shot, they have relied on Azubuki to score inside this year. Saturday afternoon on ESPN, we'll have a college hoops doubleheader. We'll start at 4 Eastern as Kentucky. Off a big home win against Texas A&M is on the road to take on Vanderbilt at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. And then it's 20th ranked North Carolina heading to the Joyce Center at South Bend to meet Notre Dame. That's at 6 Eastern. Both games part of our Saturday showcase presented by 5 Hour Energy and streaming live on the ESPN app. Watch, watch Makai Luke here. Some sort of fade screen. Graham for 3. In and out. All in all, you'd have to say, a very good road first half for Iowa State. Absolutely. A young team. They're in better shape than the team that came in last year and won, but they're not as experienced. Three-point lead for KU at the break. The Land Rover Halftime Report after these messages. Welcome back to Super Tuesday, presented by Boost Mobile. Just about set for the start of the second half between Kansas and Iowa State. We've got a good one. An underdog on the road, the Cyclones, but hanging right in there. Bob Wachusen here with Fran Fraschilla. The guys back in the studio just talked about the impact that Yudoka Azabuki had towards the end of the first half for KU. Iowa State has a talented freshman. There were times where he probably felt like an army of one out there. Yeah. Lindell Wigginton held his own. Not too bad, 16 in your first trip to Allen Fieldhouse. We should learn a little bit more about who this guy is. Absolutely. I mean, how about... Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. They've never had an NBA player come from the great province of Nova Scotia, but he played at a very high level of high school basketball and has also already represented his country. He's come in here with 16 points in the first half. He's already reached double figures for the 10th time this season. And you know what really stood out to me? Fearlessness. Taking the ball to the basket, no fear of coming into one of the revered places in all college basketball. He has come up big. Well, Iowa State last season won here at Allen Fieldhouse, ended the 51 game win streak that KU had in this building. And they have won five of their last eight games against Kansas. So there at least is a little bit of that DNA still left on this team that came in here last year and pulled off the upset. Of course, Donovan Jackson hit the game winning three. He's out there with Nick Wilder back. Well, Kansas lost some of that DNA in the, in the form of Frank Mason, the third, and Josh Jackson. Wigginton, a lot of contact, no foul calls. It just goes out of bounds off of Azabuki. He knows how to initiate the contact, which I like because that also tells you about his fearlessness. He's got a great frame for a freshman.
Tyler Babb with a crossover and a triple. And we have a tie game once again. You know what we like about this kid? He doesn't have to score, but he knows when he needs to. Remember, he's averaging 12 points a game. Quiet in the first half. Now, Devontae Graham is averaging 26 a game in conference play, only three in the first half. And, Bob, one of the things we talked about at halftime, and then Seth and Jay made the point, got to establish Azubuki inside. Solomon Young's got two fouls. He only played 10 minutes in that first half. And the big fella is unstoppable if you get that ball near the paint. Graham for three. That's in and out. Azubuki with Solomon Young contesting it. And it's out off Young. And that last foul, by the way, was on Young. So he now has three. You can see Devontae Graham. Only three points so far tonight. This for the second leading scorer in the Big 12. As we have just about reached the midway point of the season. Turning the corner with Gerald Vick. That's a wild one. Wigginton shovels one off. Lard running the floor, misses the finger roll. Well, he needed to go strong there. You, you're exactly right. He tried to spin that ball, dunk it, or use the backboard. Azabuki, pass stolen by Wigginton, who read that perfectly. Wigginton for the lead. He's got it. 18 for the freshman. The word that keeps coming to mind is fearless. Azabuki's just that. Why doesn't anybody want to block that shot? Why did they get out of the way? Is that even blockable? <laughs> well, Iowa State had their first lead for a very brief period of time. We'll see if they can get back on top. I guarantee you Bill Self looked at that stat sheet at halftime and said, 24 three-point attempts, that's way too many. We need to go back inside when we can. Graham attacks. No good. Jackson rolls off a three. Malik Newman finishes. Plus the foul on Law. Remember, Lard, who's a power forward center, is guarding a guard because Kansas has the four guard lineup. So Newman is the trail guy at the end of the break, and that is a mismatch right there. You see the big guys not even in the stance, and Malik Newman, who has struggled some tonight, knew exactly what to do, and that was put it on the floor and get by and use some of that quickness. Malik Newman scored 11 a game as a freshman in Mississippi State back in the 2015-16 season. He's also a McDonald's All-American. Transferred to Kansas, sat out last year, contributing this year. Donovan Jackson. That's no good. Out of bounds off Lard. And Devontae Graham shaking up. And he's trying to walk it off. Now Bill Self thought he, thought he he told us he's going to try to figure out how to get Devontae Graham some rest during conference play. Obviously, he's not going to be able to do that in the early part of the second half tonight. Kylo can't hit. That is the 26th three-point attempt of the game for Kansas. And we haven't even played three second half minutes yet. Malik Newman found a gift. Tyler Bam got caught in too deep when he oh look at this. Devontae Graham picks the pocket of the freshman. Lobs one. Oh, thrown down by Lachero Fitt. Timeout Iowa State. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 Basketball. Bob Shoes and Fran Fraschilla back on Super Tuesday at Allen Fieldhouse where a moment ago the first lead taken by Iowa State boy short-lived Fran is Kansas goes on a 9-0 run. That was a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, and uh, in the three losses this year at home, Kansas has been outscored on the turnover game by 14 points a game. 
And now and the pressure of yeah. Legero Vic creates a turnover. And that's what you're seeing from Kansas now. Turnabout is fair play. They've opened up this lead because of a couple turnovers and baskets. And the, uh, the facilitator, as usual, Devontae Graham, the senior out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Not scoring tonight, but running the show. He's got seven assists. I think they got to throw it inside some. They had Doak a couple times. They'll throw it now, I think. Graham straightaway three from NBA range comes up short. He is now one for seven from three. Now, when you come into Allen Fieldhouse, you have to you have to win a couple of games. The turnover game. Wigginson comes up short. And Bob, you can't allow Kansas to shoot lights out from three. In their losses, they're only shooting 30% behind the arc. As a bookie out of the double team to Newman. Weiler bad, hit hard by Newman. And the foul called on Malik Newman. Well, that 9 0 run was fun to watch. Yes, it was. And it happened because of a couple turnovers. And Devontae Graham usually in the middle. There's the pickpocket. Then on the other end, I think they've done this about a thousand times in practice and in games. Yes, they have. But Gerald Vick on the end, the finishing end. That's fun. Would you do that, Bob? On a Nerf hoop. Bob Shoes and Fran Brashilla back at the fog. Kansas by seven in the midst of a 9-0 run that continued through our last break. Let's see the response now from this Iowa State team that lost just about all of their production from last year. Oh, that was a golden era of Cyclone basketball. Foul on Azabuki. Well, you think of the great players that uh, we got a chance to see over those years. Naz Mitru Long, he averaged one point a game as an Iowa State freshman. And you know where he is right now today? On Making the, some money. On the Utah Jazz. He's on a two-way deal. Monte Morris with the Denver Nuggets. Matt Thomas playing in Spain. Deontay Burton making good money in Korea. And Nazmi True Long, a mentor somewhat to Lindell Wigginton. Yeah, absolutely. There is, there's definitely been a Canadian club, if you will, at Iowa State. Melvin Edgem was a great Cyclone player. And then, of course, Nazmi True Long. And now we're seeing another one in Lindell Wigginton. Costly missiles at the line for Cameron Lard. Newman from the corner. Yes. Well, what they're doing is they're, they were, they've been backing off Newman so they could double team Azabuki, and as he ran by Devontae Graham, you could see Devontae Graham say, I got you, keep shooting. I believe in you. Now, Bill Self told us during the offseason, he thought Malik Newman could actually be this team's leading scorer. Big shot for Wigginton as Kansas had just opened their largest lead. And by the way, the sixth 20-point game for that freshman that we've been talking about all night. That shot went down for Newman. You could feel the energy of this place. All of a sudden, the lead's up to double digits. It was that danger zone of maybe the game getting away from Iowa State, and then a freshman steps up in the corner and hits a yes. three. Jackson, back-to-back -back threes for the Cyclones. And just like that, they've cut the lead down to four. Now remember, Jackson has been in a little mini slump tonight. Only two of eight behind the arc until he knocked that one down. Newman. He's got back-to-back -back threes of his own. Now that's got to feel good. Making one for a shooter is good. When you do it back-to-back, -back, now you're feeling that confidence. Anybody can make one. Jackson gave it up, and Lard able to finish. Nicely done, and 
You know what? Iowa State, they, they've quieted the crowd a number of times. Newman this time drives it. Scores again. Listen, Bill Self is stuck with this kid. Now, he doesn't have much of a choice. But you can tell early in the game he came out looking for his shot. Weiler back, hit the underside of the rim, but a foul called. Devontae Graham, I think, committed the foul, and on top of that, went down hard. That's his second. Devontae Graham's been banged up in this game. That's, I think, the third time we've seen him get up very slowly. Well, he's averaging 36 minutes a game, Bob. And uh, Bill Self has told us many times through the years, he loves a nine-man rotation. Five guards, four bigs. You see right here, contact. He's not set. He took a shot to the chin. And it's amazing to think how close Devontae Graham was to never playing for Bill Self and never coming to Lawrence. Yeah, it's a, it is amazing because he signed at Appalachian State before the start of his senior year at Raleigh Broughton High School. Now, by the way, that's the high school that produced a guy named Pete Maravich. I've heard of him. Yep, he had second thoughts, and he, he, he didn't want to go to Appalachian State. His AAU coach, Dwayne West, called Brewster Academy and said, I've got a kid that wants to play for you. You've had some of our guys before. Remember T.J. Warren, who's now in the NBA? Isaac Copeland, now playing in Nebraska. So he went to Brewster Academy to play for Jason Smith. Now, the letter of intent to Appalachian State was still in effect and they would not relent. The coach was fired, new coach came in, and after a year of, I, I think, talking to him today, he was not, he thought he might not ever be able to yeah. get out of that letter. Yeah, Devontae Graham said that the year that he spent in prep school was a nervous year. That's right. He, he thought he was gonna end up at App State, and that was not where he wanted to go, well, and it all worked out for the best. Yeah, he would have gone to JUCO, as opposed to App State, but the new coach said, we're gonna let you go, all the best to you. Kansas was recruiting him. Here's the interesting thing. Kansas had a point guard from Brewster Academy by the name of Nadir Tharp. He was going to be a senior, but it wasn't working out. Bill Self was honest with Devontae. He said, look, we have a spot for you. And boy, we talked to him today, and he said, my life would have been completely different. Another three for Jackson. And it's down to a three-point lead, not too far away from the spot where he hit the game winner last year right in front of his own bench. You remember that to travel. Newman turns it over. You and I were here that day. What a game that was. That was a tremendous wow. game. And right now, Donovan Jackson standing just about on the spot in the lower right corner of the court there where he made the game winner last year. Lard. Oh, that's Kisses right. it off the window. Well, How about the response for Iowa State down by 10, and they fight it back to a one-point game? Absolutely, and I said it in the first half. I'll say it again. They have been poised. Now, this team's 0-3 in the Big 12. It tells you all you need to know about what this league's been about. This team won the Puerto Rico shootout. Finger roll off the mark for Devontae Graham. And then it's out of bounds. So it belongs to Iowa State. Cyclones with a chance to retake the lead. Bob, it's amazing. They haven't lost three games in Allen Fieldhouse in almost 20 years. Now, they've already got three home losses because Washington came into the Sprint Center and put a hurting on them. New coach Mike Hopkins played that 2-3 zone that he learned under Jim Beheim. Iowa State turns it over, right back to KU. Yeah, and Hans Brace is a guy you wouldn't expect to throw the ball away. The, the former Princeton player, they know how to pass the ball at Princeton. But the uh, clock was on. Kylo rolls home another three. Let me tell you, that was the toughest one he's made tonight because that was good defense.
Wilder back. Yes. Nice drive. They did a good job of shielding the big guy. Uh-oh. Makai Luke running the floor. That's his first two-point goal. And he's got 20. Too easy. Steve Froh just trying to get to the under 12 without a Kansas run. Jackson needs help. Lard with four to shoot. Tough fadeaway. Comes up short. Here comes Newman. Step back. Triple. Well, they put him all points bulletin now for Malik Newman the last couple days. And they may have found him. Would Donovan Jackson have a chance? For another game winner, Iowa State's going to have to fight their way back. But we'll talk to them when we come back. Eighteen made threes last year to win at Kansas, and none more famous going down in Iowa State history than Donovan Jackson from right in this spot. Take us through the play of what happened. Uh, Monte Morris, man, he got crafty at the top of the key. <laughs> Um, went down to the slot area, and then I fell behind like we usually do in practice, and, you know, luckily he found me for the shot. When you get back to the locker room, and all of a sudden now, all of Ames is coming at you because obviously they were all home watching. Uh, I think it was this little kid off of Instagram. He DM'd me and he said, like, you're the GOAT, man. You're my inspiration. And after that, I was very, very confident. Well, I'll see if you can do it again tonight. Hopefully. Thanks. He's hoping for another chance as Donovan Jackson has already made four threes. He's got 14, but last year, 18 made threes, a school record in what was not only an amazing win for Iowa State, but an iconic shot hit from the corner by Jackson. Tonight, friend, they've only made seven threes, yet they're down by seven still in the game. Yes, they, and they, like we said, they played with, for a young team, a new team, because that's what it is, a new team, lots of composure and poise. This time they leave Jackson alone, and he makes them pay. That's his fifth three. You know, we noticed this last year with Jack. You know the interesting thing about Jackson? It wasn't until a couple days before the start of the regular season that he even decided to play because Steve Prone was going to redshirt him because he wanted to be the point guard when Monte Morris left. And I think his teammate said, Donovan, we need you. We need you this year. You're going to be a good player this year for us. And you know what? He was part of a Sweet 16 team. He's trying another. He's got another. Back-to-back -back threes for Donovan Jackson. And Bill Self wants a timeout. Listen, we saw the ice water last year. We saw the freshman tonight, Wigginton, carry this team in the first half. But Donovan Jackson down the stretch of last season and on into the Sweet 16 made these kind of shots in these kind of environments. The junior college transfer out of Milwaukee. He comes in here again, Bob. Hey, listen, you must have motivated him today because you put him in that corner and he probably had that flashback. That's pretty good. I have that kind of an impact. I uh, can't do it with my chest. <laughs> but in the Big 12, you're great. Well, you said it for Donovan Jackson tonight. It's ice as he has. When he has had those moments, a chance to hit the dagger three, just like the game winner last year, he has done it. And how many times have we seen the moment in the game where you're in this building often enough and you watch Kansas, you can feel the tidal wave coming and teams just get consumed by it. And all of a sudden, you're down by three, you blink, you're down by 17. Iowa State has taken all of those body blows and answered. Yeah, and, and what this also points out is, listen, Kansas may still end up winning the league, but this is the most vulnerable that I can ever remember a Kansas team this late in the season. Gerald Vick, short on the finger roll. You know, this is arguably the worst team in a, a league that we know is really, really good. And they've got Kansas at least temporarily on the ropes. Heat check for Jackson. Brace with an offensive rebound. Solomon Young. 
will try a couple at the line to give Iowa State the lead. Kansas again, if they win the league this year, 14 consecutive Big 12 regular season titles would break UCLA's all-time record. But look at the challenge that they will face at the top of the league. Three teams in the top 10, all above Kansas in the top 25. It's going to be a war all the way through. Well, I would say this, too. Some of these records are more indicative of who you've played so far. What we're going to see between now and the second week of March, when we go to Kansas City, Bob, is it's going to be a roller coaster ride, depending on what stretch of four or five games each team has coming up. But no, more so than any league in college basketball, it's a true gauntlet of home and away. See, I would start to begin to foul as a Buki. I won't let him score on the inside. A little strong on the jump hook. Put back by Vic. Uh, why were Bab got popped in the mouth? He says he's okay. But you can't let Azabuki get that close to the basket without thinking about fouling him. It's either 77% or 44%, which is what he shoots from the line. Wilder Bab a three. Brace with an offensive rebound. A yeah, fresh 30 for the Cyclones. You see how good good a flow they have with Wilder Bab at the point. Solomon Young fouled by Azabuki. Our next NBA Wednesday doubleheader tips at 8 Eastern tomorrow night. Ross Carmelo, Paul George, and OKC taking on Carl Anthony Towns, Jimmy Butler, and the T-Wolves. Then out to Oracle, DeAndre Jordan and the Clippers taking on Steph, KD, and the Warriors. The doubleheader coverage tips off with NBA Countdown at 7 on ESPN and the ESPN app. Brace skips one. Five to shoot. Jackson rides it into traffic, throws a wide one up. It won't go, and a foul will be called against Iowa State. That'll go against Solomon Young. Down the stretch at Allen Fieldhouse in a moment. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Boost Mobile. There is a reason that Kansas is 92 and 16 in their last nearly 100 games here at home. And this crowd, a major impact, seven and a half minutes to go. Malik Newman, in and out. Offensive rebound by Gerald Vick. Now with Gerald Vick has provided some grit and toughness tonight on the offensive glass, especially in the second half. See, they're trying to get Azubuki away from the basket. Great read by Vick to sag down in the passing lane. Now another poor decision by the freshman, Lard. That's his sixth turnover tonight. out by Lard. Nine to shoot for KU. You know what? Lard's only got one foul. Nick Weiler bad. We talked about his importance to this team. Tonight he's doing it. He's got two teammates and on the perimeter with 20 and 21 points in Wigginton and Donovan Jackson. He's shot played five. his role. Winding down. Graham, nice shot fake. He's just been off tonight. One for 10 from the field. Now one for 11. Critical here that the Cyclones get a good look. Wigginson. And Vick pulls down the rebound. <laughs> a 
Malik Newman comes up short. Now what a decision Steve Pro made in the game, third game of the season. Switching his perimeter guys around and letting Wilder back orchestrate. And the freshman Wigginson off another assist from Wilder Bab. Makes it a one-point game with under six to go. And Bill Self wants another timeout. Well, they ran a set, and you know, it's one thing to run a set play. It's another thing to put the ball on the money. Watch the little, we call it a floppy action. Those three baseline screens. Wigginton comes off firing, but the ball's got to be on target. And again, one of those ropes we talked about from Wilder Babb tonight. And Bill Self was staring daggers at Steve Mikhailuk as he came over to the sideline. Was that a spot where Mikhailuk has to read that that's going to end up in the corner? He left Wigginson yeah. alone for three. What happens is when you put the two guards underneath the basket and one comes off the other, you can easily switch that. You've got to be able to switch your guard so that there's always coverage on a man coming off the screen. And Mikhailuk is a veteran player. He needs to know that. We've got number two against number three in our women's Thursday night showcase as Notre Dame takes on Louisville. Seven Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Muffet McGraw again with Notre Dame right at the top of the national rankings in Louisville. 18 and 0 to start off the season. Newman. And hit it, and again a chance for Iowa State to take the lead. Grayson of a double team. Jackson for two. Azabuki hands it off to Devontae Graham. Graham wants to run, but he uh, he didn't have everybody up the court with him. So you're going to go half court. They are trying to get the ball to Azabuki. Large's done a good job. And Azabuki was pushed by Lard that time. Yeah, Bob, that's only the 15th foul. And if I could, because Lard's only got one foul, if, if the ball gets into the paint too deep, now watch. He's away from the basket. They call the foul. I am not letting Big Dope shoot a 80% shot when I can foul him and make him make two free throws. Both teams with one foul to give. Graham for three. Finally knocks one down. That was a freshman mistake by Lindell Wigginton. He swiped at a ball thinking he could steal it. And once he missed it, he let the senior get a wide open look. Wigginton can't answer. The back tap. Weiler Bad kept it alive, and he knocked it out. Tell you what, there haven't been a lot of substitutions tonight, especially in the second half. Graham sucking wind. Weiler Bad sucking wind. Wigginton walking around. Weiler Babb, along with Wigginton, and Jackson have all played at least 34 minutes. And there's Weiler Babb. That extra gear lays it in. And it's a one possession game again. This is when you're in really good pickup games at a Y, and you've won seven in a row, and you don't want to come off the court. Newman comes up short. Brace with the left hand short, cleaning it up. Cameron Lard, and we're tied. Bob, right now, because of the lack of depth that Kansas doesn't enjoy, these teams are tired. Devontae Graham scoops and scores. There's a TV timeout coming, so neither coach wants to use one of their TOs. They only have one left apiece. Yes. Wilder back. 
Too strong, Lard, a fresh 30. I would rest for about 15 seconds right now. Just take the air out of the ball and let your teammates get some composure. See, they're trying to get Dope away from the basket. Gonna shoot the three. Blocked by Newman. Here comes Vic. Off to Newman. He's able to finish. Steve Crow. I'm not saying he should use it, but he's got to think about using it. Brace through contact. Newman's got the loose ball. If Kansas scores, Iowa State has to call timeout. Devontae Graham scores. And you called it. And Steve Crone just called it. Kansas has not lost back-to-back -back games at Allen Fieldhouse since the 88-89 season. has orchestrated terrific offense all night. Wilder Babb has been the catalyst, and there's another turnover. That looks like a fatigue turnover yep. between Wigginson and Lard. Coming up on 90 seconds to go. A must stop, you would think, on this trip for Iowa State. And if you're Kansas, you're going to milk this clock. Newman fouls it into Azabuki. Foul him. Five to shoot. Out of bounds off Jackson with three on the timer. Let me tell you what started this run. Iowa State with a chance to take the lead. This is a tell. Anytime a clock is running down and a shooter puts it through his legs, he's going to shoot a three. Malik Newman was right on that. Maybe because Malik Newman is a shooter as well, but he timed that perfectly. That'll be a shot clock violation on KU with 1.10 to go. So Iowa State gets the stop they needed. Now they have to execute at the offensive yeah, end. Yeah, and I think what you got to do is spread the floor here and let Wilder bad use a pick, but get into the lane. It's not a time to run a lot of fancy offense. And the Cyclones are out of timeouts. Wigginson rips through. Throws it to nowhere. Here's McCallum. Plays it in, plus the foul. I want to remind you, Bob, that this is the third straight game this young Iowa State team has taken a game to the wire. The last two are overtime losses, and although it's been a gritty performance, they have not executed in the final couple of minutes. This is not going to be a final score that's indicative of how close this game was all the way through. Wilder back, and he draws Iowa State just a bit closer, but again, they're out of timeouts. No, they've got a foul right away. And Steve Prohm is furious at his team, not realizing that they needed to get up and foul, and they take an intentional foul. Let's take a look at the Capital One fan vote. Now, right now, Kansas is not in the top ten, but this is going to be the vote that we're taking, and you can go 
and register your selection of who you think the number one team in college hoops ought to be. Well, listen, Villanova is the logical team there. But uh, a little birdie told me that when Villanova scrimmaged Virginia this year in a close scrimmage, that Virginia actually outscored Villanova. Virginia, one of the surprise teams in the country. Again, Facebook.com slash SportsCenter is where you go to register your vote. I still think Villanova is the most complete team in America. They are. They're not a deep team, but they've got six starters. I asked one of their coaches early in the year, who's, the, who's your best player? And he said, I don't know. Every day we have a new best player. Now they fouled out Zabuki. He missed both free throws, but because it was intentional, Kansas gets the ball back. And Big Doak's going to take a seat as Bill Self goes to five guards. Well, four guards and Lightfoot. So if you're Iowa State here, you got to turn this into a uh, comeback game. And what you do is, if you can't steal it right away, you must foul and put Kansas on the line. Hope they miss and you make. Problem. Jackson fouls Vic. Well, Gerald Vic only a 65% free throw shooter of the players on the floor right now for Kansas. That's who, percentage wise, Iowa State would want to foul. You might think it's Mitch Lightfoot, but he's 14 of 17. It's at the free throw line so far this season. Yeah, last year Mitch was 2 of 12. And there's the miss from LeGerald Vic. Got it. Weiler bad for three. Iowa State just ran out of gas. Bill, uh, Steve Prohm still wants him to get up and foul. Uh, we're down to 21 and a half seconds to go. And it is a seven point lead for Kansas. And now they'll have an 89% free throw shooter at the line in Malik Newman. Newman's working on a career high. He's got 26. You know, if you ask him after this game, he, he's got 27 now. He probably, if he was really hot, he could have 40 tonight. But you like his aggressiveness. He's coming off a one-point game at TCU on Saturday night. Tremendous effort from Iowa State. Down to 10 seconds to go. Jackson comes up short. The rebound ends up with Wigginton. That three goes down with seven tenths of a second to go. That will end it. Kansas survives about five different charges from Iowa State, and they win it by five. Iowa State needed to come in here with a new, new group, play with poise and composure. Anytime you get good guard play, which Iowa State has had for a number of years now, it's been different characters. It's no longer Naz, Mitru Long, Monte Morris, Matt Thomas, some of the others, but Jackson, Wigginton, Wilder Babb did a terrific job of keeping the Cyclones in this game. Kansas avoids three straight losses at home for the first time since the late 80s. And they avenge last year's loss to Iowa State that ended the 51 game home win streak for KU. Never a dull night in the Big 12 for Fran Fraschilla. I'm Bob Washusen. 83-78, Kansas survives against the Cyclones. Now it's time for College Basketball Live, presented by Hoop Scoop.